Well, hello and welcome to this week's episode of On Deck with Avoya, your weekly travel update. I'm your host, Chris Green, Director of Network Expansion at Avoya Travel, and we appreciate your time for tuning into our show today. And what an amazing show we have lined up for you, one that's focused on the power of relationships, as Avoya Travel has some of the deepest relationships with the key vendors in all of the leisure travel categories. Need an amazing partner connected to the best all-inclusive brands you can find? We have you covered at Avoya Travel. Need a great partner connected in the cruise industry? We've got you covered there as well. And the same thing in tour and escorted tour. If it is leisure travel, Avoya Travel has the relationships in that space that make a true difference for those in the Avoya network. It's one of the top reasons why the Avoya network is known as the network with affiliates that sell more and generate more in commissions. And we sure hope at the end of today's broadcast, you hear something that makes you want to know a bit more because we're excited to tell our story and see if it's a good fit for you and your agency. And we're going to be welcoming in an amazing guest for today's Q&A. Jim Tedesco, Vice President of Sales for Apple Leisure Group Vacations, will be my featured Meet the Industry guest. Jim is one of the most high profile people we've been lucky enough to source here for our show On Deck with Avoya. We can't wait to find out more about Jim's background and travel, get some amazing brand updates on the Apple Leisure Group, and discuss why great partnerships matter to the vendors as much as they do Avoya travel. Jim will be joining us here in just a few minutes here on On Deck with Avoya. We're also going to feature some of this week's top travel stories in our Eye on the Industry segment. Among the stories we're following are a report from the Hyatt Corporation on their desire to grow the all-inclusive concept throughout the world with a big focus on Europe, Asia, even here in the United States, kind of forbidden territory up until now. Virgin Voyages, not quite ready to make it three times a lady as their latest ship launch has been pushed back to 2023. And United Airlines is the first carrier to add a new Trans-Pacific route since the start of the pandemic, we'll discuss what city in Australia, uh, Australia will be serviced with this new nonstop flight. All of those stories coming up here in just a few minutes. We'll also take a moment towards the end of today's program to discuss our best in class resources for either a new to the travel industry professional or an already established agency just looking to take their business to that next level. And we'll wrap up today's On Deck with Avoya with all of our contact information so you can reach out and get started with the affiliation process to join the number one host agency as voted by the travel industry for seven years running. Okay, let's kick off today's On Deck with Avoya, your weekly travel update with some industry insights and our eye on the industry feature. The Hyatt Hotels Corporation has big plans to grow all inclusives around the world. Speaking at the International Hospitality Industry Investment Conference, Hyatt, Corp's, uh, Hyatt Hotels Corporation CEO Mark Lamazian outlined a plan for aggressive growth of the all-inclusive resorts around the world. The CEO is quoted as saying, we're now expanding through our AMR collection and Ziva and Zalara brands into five-star luxury all-inclusives in Europe, and we're extending that into the Middle East. We'll eventually extend that throughout Asia. This is something that we expect to continue to expand significantly over time, he went on to say, and that he even sees potential growth for all-inclusive resorts in the United States. Quoting, I think in the United States, we'll start to see some all-inclusive offerings, which historically has never been the case. Hyatt Hotels Corporation has been making big inroads with several all-inclusive brands, including their Hyatt Ziva and Zalara brands, and of course, with the purchase last year of the Apple Leisure Group, including the AMR collection. It was supposed to be once, twice, then three times a lady for Virgin Voyages, as the Resilient Lady was supposed to debut this August, but the Resilient Lady will need to be resilient for just a bit longer, as now it waits until 2023 for her grand debut, saying interruptions in the supply chain, labor shortages, regional uncertainty in European uh, countries, and COVID testing restrictions for guests re-entering the United States as being behind the decision to wait. Virgin Voyages CEO Tom McAlpin said the line remains focused on delivering brilliant vacations and this pause will ensure we'll be ready to go on resilient. Virgin's first ship, the Scarlet Lady, was delivered in February 2020, right at the start of the pandemic. The ship had to wait a full year plus to make its debut in August of 2021. The Valiant Lady sailed its maiden cruise this March. The Resilient Lady had been scheduled to sail its first 
cruise from Athens in mid-August. Instead, the 2,770 passenger ship will remain at the shipyard in Genoa, where it was constructed. A fourth ship, Brilliant Lady, is still in the works. Virgin Voyages remains committed to the cruise sector after recently completing construction of its new terminal in Port Miami. And one last thing of note, Virgin Voyages did say, important to travel advisors, they will be protecting commissions for travel partners on funds already paid. And finally, United Airlines is offering another option for U.S. travelers to go nonstop to Australia as they add the first new Trans-Pacific route since the COVID pandemic shut down world travel in 2020. This three times per week scheduled service will be, uh, be between San Francisco and Brisbane beginning August 28th and will be only the second flight to fly direct from the United States to Brisbane, the other being a Qantas flight that operates out of Los Angeles. United will fly the route with Boeing 787-9 Dreamliner aircraft equipped with 48 Polaris business class seats, 21 premium plus seats, 39 economy plus seats, and 149 economy seats for those of us that fly in the back of the plane. United currently operates nonstop routes between Los Angeles and San Francisco to both Melbourne and Sydney. And I think 2023 is gonna be a big year for travel to the South Pacific. So we'll continue to monitor this and other stories impacting travel to that region. Wanna say a big thanks to our friends at Travel Weekly and Travel Pulse for some of the details in this week's Eye on the Industry feature. Well, it's been a while since we brought you a Meet the Industry segment, but we're making up for lost time with an amazing guest and discussion today. Jim Tedesco, Vice President of Sales for Apple Leisure Group Vacations, has been kind enough to join us today. And Jim will be joining us here in just a second. But before we bring Jim on, I just want to point out how important and vital relationships are in the travel business. I mean, maybe more than in any other industry today, relationships, partnerships, they directly impact a travel advisor's ability to sell more travel. Thankfully, at Avoya Travel, we have partnerships and relationships as a cornerstone resource. We work very closely with all of the major players in the leisure industry, and it helps benefit our exclusive live lead program, the commission levels we receive, promotions we're able to negotiate or piggyback off of, and in some cases, double dip those promotions, and allows those in the Avoyan network to benefit from those relationships to sell more and generate more in commissions. It's certainly true of the great and exclusive relationship we share with the Apple Leisure Group, and it'll be a focal point for, today, uh, for today's discussion. So, Please, let's welcome in our special Meet the Industry guest today, Jim Tedesco, Vice President of Sales for Apple Leisure Group Vacations. Jim, thanks so much for your time and welcome to On Deck with Avoya. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for having me, Chris. Hello to everyone. Before we jump into our main topics, Jim, could you give us maybe a little bit of your background in the travel industry and how you came to be with Apple Leisure Group Vacations? Yeah, sure. So um, I'm. it's about 15 years now that I've been in the industry. Um, I started a few years out of college, um, and, and by pure coincidence, actually, I, I happened to be my first job out of college. I was a publicist for um, a lot of children's entertainment. So I was actually the publicist for like Barney and Bob the Builder and the Wiggles and Thomas the Tank Engine and all of those um, fun characters with songs that you get stuck in your head forever and ever. Um, and I was uh, going to grad school, and I worked with someone who worked in the tourism industry, and I had kind of said, you know, if you have any openings in the sales or marketing side, I'd love to just kind of make a switch over. And literally <laughs> within three weeks, I was had interviewed with the necessary people and, and had moved over. And that started my tourism career. And I've worked on the retail side and the hotel, the wholesale side. I've worked for tour operators. Um, I've done sales side and marketing side. Um, and about two and a half years ago, I joined the team here at Apple Leisure Group Vacations as their VP of Sales. So I currently, in my in my role here, I um, I oversee and get the privilege of looking after all the the business development managers and the regional sales directors that um, do such a great job. I'm very proud of them of of working with the travel agencies across the U.S., including our friends at Avoya, and um, and making sure that you get the support you need to help grow grow your sales in general and more specifically with us. <laughs> Absolutely, and we certainly appreciate that great relationship. And along the same line, since some in our audience today are still new to the travel industry, do you mind giving us an overview of Apple Leisure Group Vacations yeah. and how you're positioned in our great industry? Yeah, so Apple Leisure Group Vacations is um, one of the many verticals that fall under the Apple Leisure Group umbrella. Um, we are the vacations division. We work directly with travel agents to help you close the sale. We sort of are that in-between person 
um, the wholesaler that you turn to to get a good rate at a competitive rate at a good commission um, and and kind of your one-stop shop from everything from the air, the hotel, the car rental, the sightseeing, the transfers, you can book it all in one place um, with someone that you have confidence and, and a good relationship with, but also someone that has the relationships in the industry to help facilitate all of that. Um, we are one vertical of other verticals under the Appalachia Group umbrella. So um, Amstar is our DMC that we use in across Mexico and Caribbean, many destinations in Mexico and Caribbean. That is one side of our umbrella and that's who you would book your transfers and, and sightseeing through and you do it through us obviously. But it's nice to know that we have additional components of the vacation package all under one roof um, because it does allow us to help control a little bit more of that overall vacation experience that you're looking to provide for your customer. Um, and, and you mentioned Hyatt earlier, Hyatt actually acquired us uh, back November 1st, the deal closed. Um, so Apple Leisure Group as a whole sits under the Hyatt Hotels um, umbrella if you were to take it one step further up the ladder in the hierarchy as well. It's, a, it's somewhat of a complicated industry, but when you see how all the puzzle pieces kind of fit together, it yeah. all starts to make sense, right, Jim? Yeah. We, yeah, we're all big, one happy family, and somehow we're all six degrees of separation. I, I always um, joke, actually, in this industry that you never you never burn a bridge because you never know who you're going to be working with, for, or uh, alongside in the future because it is a very, um, it's, a, it's a lot smaller of an industry than you sometimes think. Absolutely. Yeah, you burn a bridge thinking going in this direction. You find out now the bridge is actually going from the direction behind you to where you're exactly. going. You've exactly. You've already burnt that. So yeah, no doubt it's a pretty exciting time for the brand though right now, isn't it, Jim? I oh, mean, yes. And, and of course, we're so happy to have such an important partner for Avoya Travel and the Avoya Network. Can you give us some of the highlights of things that are new and exciting that's going on at Apple Leisure Group Vacations? Yeah, so, um, you know, our big focus has always been the travel agent. Our job is to make sure that your job is done as efficiently as possible. I want you to be able to close more sales um, in a shorter period of time um, with the support and uh the information that you need at your hand and at your fingertips. So um, some of the newer things actually throughout COVID, but also throughout the last year as we kind of come out of COVID has been around technology enhancement. So um, many of you might be familiar with VAX. That's our booking technology, our, um, the booking engine that you would use to, to book with us. Um, and we've invested millions of dollars over the last 12 months, but for sure over the last two and a half years in redeveloping some of the efficiencies that you would need to help close those sales quicker. Um, travel credits have become a big part of our day-to-day -day lives that were never really part of it earlier, pre-COVID. Um, and so we've included and paid, well, we've invested, but we've developed additional technology now for you to not only look up travel credit amounts, but then automatically just apply the travel credit amount directly to the booking. No need for our accounting teams to get involved. Um, and you have all that information at your fingertips. We've created more efficiencies as well, just in the overall booking process. Little things like in the way that you can filter certain things uh, within VAX, right down to um, which I hope we, I hope it goes away soon with the testing requirements to come back, but right down to like filtering who does on-site COVID testing, who charges for COVID testing. Um, it, it allows you to sort of uh, tailor the vacation a little bit more to some of the newer questions that a lot of your customers might be asking you. Um, so in a nutshell, that's some of it, but we, we've invested millions of dollars each year into VAX. We're also investing a, a few million dollars into a new learning system. Um, the learning management system will hopefully launch by the end of this year, and that will allow you to sort of become certified as an Apple Leisure Group Vacations agent uh, and take you through from start to finish what you need to know um, in how to work VAX and how to operate it and how to sell and destination information and a whole bunch of different things, selling tips, things like that. Um, we've also have for your marketing, like I mentioned about support, it's not just in the booking support. It's also, we want to help you as much as possible in getting those bookings. So um, we have a, a platform that's not really new, but not as, not as many people take advantage of it as, as I would hope. And that's the AL, ALGV360 platform. It's ALGV360.com. You can sign up and get a username and password for that. And that's our turnkey marketing tool for you. You can go in and take advantage of images that we've purchased that you can take and use in your own social media posts. 
We have pre-planned social media posts that you can copy and paste and use it for your own uh, content. We have flyers and we have uh, everything you can possibly imagine um, that you can kind of plug in your information, save it, and off you go with turnkey marketing tools that you can use to help grow your business in your local communities and, and uh, newspaper ads, things like that. So um, I definitely encourage you there. And then the other thing that we've invested in is our travel log and our travel blog. The travel log is um, a great way. It's kind of like an e-brochure, but on steroids. Um, the best way I kind of I can explain it is that when you get an e-brochure, you click and you turn pages, and it's really just like a printed brochure in an e-version. But what happens when you do that, or when you take a printed brochure in, in general, is that the content can become out of date by the time it's printed, because they've upgraded the rooms, they've repainted them, they've changed room category names, and you also only get a couple images on the page. The travel log, you can actually go in, take the e-brochure, click and choose which pages you want to send to your clients. So you can say, I want the cover, I want the Amstar page, I want the travel protection page, I want these four hotels, because that's what I recommended to them, and I want the back cover. And it customizes the, the e-brochure just for you, <coughs> excuse me, and the images, if you can uh, send them the link and you can hover over it and up will pop a carousel of images, which will constantly be updated. So even if it gets updated, um, with construction, things like that, the new images will automatically appear. There's also ways for us to plug in videos and things like that. So um, I like to always toss out the fact that a, the studies have shown that a customer, by the time they come to you as a travel advisor, has 42 touch points already in planning the vacation themselves. Um, the last thing you want is to give them something to then go off and prompt them to go to the hotel's website or to look at TripAdvisor or to look at other review sites to find more images. You wanna give them something so that you're their 42nd and final piece of that vacation planning process. And the travel log does exactly, exactly that. And then we have the travel blog, which is a blog that you can easily repost content into your social pages as well. So uh, there's a lot going on. I could probably spend the full hour just going through some of the new things, but that's in a nutshell, a little bit of, um, what we've invested in the last couple of months and what we're excited to be launching in the next future months. Jim, and you'd mentioned, uh, you know, the VAX uh, system earlier in that uh, discussion. And of course, I just want to add that Avoya Travel, we have uh, between our partnership with uh, the Apple Leisure Group people, we actually have a direct connect with, with the VAX. It's right Correct. through our exclusive technology that we use at Avoya Travel. So the bookings that our affiliates are able to make in the VAX system pull in really easy and again, Talking exactly. about time and efficiency, which directly leads to more sales and more commissions. Again, that investment's been made and my team is more than happy to talk about that. Exactly. Jim, at the end of the day, is it fair to say that a travel advisor, both them and their business and the clients that they represent are, are going to benefit because they worked with Apple Leisure to, to fulfill that vacation request? Yeah, I'm, I mean, I would like to think so. I mean, I think we do a pretty good job of making sure that um, you know, everything we do comes back to providing a value to you to offer your clients and then also a value to you because, look, I recognize that any travel advisor in the industry has a choice in where they, they bring their business. And we have an enormous amount of gratitude for every booking that we're entrusted with because we know that that's a vacation memory that you're helping plan for someone. And it's a, it's a big deal, whether it's a two night stay somewhere domestically, or it's a seven night stay in a presidential suite, they're, they're all treated the exact same because we know that it's special. Um, so for you, you know, we have things like uh, exclusive perks. Uh, exclusive perks are something where you, it's not at every hotel, but it's at a, a decent amount of hotels actually throughout Mexico Caribbean. All you have to do is book it. And by doing that, we've pre-negotiated um, spa treatments. We've negotiated champagne in the room and, and all of that, it, the list can go on, but um, all of that is is from you. We don't need to take any credit for that. You don't need to submit any forms. It's just part of the package. And it's something that you can say is something that you did for your customer. Um, you can take all the credit. I'm happy for that to happen. Um, we also have things like get paid to upgrade, which a, a lot of hotels in some of the higher level room categories, we negotiate deals so that you can earn 2% more commission on booking that room category. So, and sometimes it is an exclusive perks hotel. So not only are you giving your customer a better experience by choosing that hotel, but you're actually getting paid more on the back end as well for that. So um, we also have our ENVF, our charters, 
Um, and 2023 is actually out now um, for sale. For the most part, there's still a few gateways that we haven't launched yet, but we pay a full commission um, on the airfare when you book an exclusive nonstop vacation flight. And um, the, the perk of that is that for the most part, it's the only nonstop for the most of the flights. We're the only nonstop out of that gateway to that destination city. Um, so it allows you to provide a better flight option. They all have great departure times and, and arrival times back into the destination and departure back home. Um, but we pay your full contract a commission on it. So you're making a pretty good price on a pretty good commission on a valuable price point put on a, a flight that is um, kind of rare for that market. Um, and we do quite well for that. And our 2022 charters have sold fantastic. And our 2023, as we start to launch it, are already selling quite well too. So I, I, for those of you that are booking, I thank you for your support. For those of you that are just joining the industry or starting to think about joining the industry, if you're in any of our ENVF gateways, definitely take a look at those. We have 13 gateways across the US that go to pretty much, it varies by, by the region, but Cabo and Cancun and, and uh, Vallarta and Montego Bay and um, yeah, a few others. There's there's a, a, a laundry list of, of where we where we fly to. Mostly the big hot spots. Yep. So it's like a, an extra win win. But to exactly. hear the word air and commission in the same sentence, I'll be honest, yeah. my brain took an extra second <laughs> to actually be able to compute that. Hey, Jim, really quick, can we circle back? Can you give the um, the web address again for the marketing that you were talking about there sure. with Apple Leisure? Because I had a couple of questions come in through the Q and A about yep. that. It's ALGV as an Apple Asia Group Vacations 360, 360.com. Super simple. ALGV 360. It's a 360 turnkey, uh, 360 degree turnkey marketing platform. Um, you can sign up, get your username, and have at it. Would that work with the same username that they normally would log into with that? It, so they have to yeah, it's unfortunately a separate site. Um, right. So they, they would need to submit the registration and then within like 24 hours, they us usually get your, your username and password confirmed and you're all good to go. Cool. Man, resorts had such a, a different story as far as COVID versus say some of the other leisure, you know, crews for sure just sat on the yeah. sidelines for the longest time. And, yeah. and I guess, you know, resorts in some ways certainly would have benefited from that, at least the ones that people were able to get to. And we certainly saw strong sales on our resort side. I mean, through the roof compared to pre-pandemic. Sales have been pretty good here at Avoya Travel. Things are looking pretty solid for you guys there as well. Yeah, we have been, you know, knock on wood and, you know, pray that it continues. But we've been very lucky and, and thankful um, that our 20, so our 21 was fantastic. Our 2021 was great. Um, from March, it was like the perfect storm, right, of like, March, we got income tax checks and we got vaccinations. And then it was like, everyone was ready to travel again. Um, and we did really well for 21 and 22 is looking fantastic as well. And and I know for those of you that are on the call that are, are agents and, and or uh, affiliates and booking, um, you know, I thank you because I know that it has not, it, it's been a long road and it's been a tough one, but, you know, we're coming back with, with vengeance and, and really proving why the, the travel agent is a, a vital part of the vacation planning process. Um, our 22 numbers are looking really good. Our 23 numbers are looking even better. Um, we're seeing far more future bookings than we normally would at this time of year for the following year. Um, which we're not complaining, we're happy with it. And I think part of that might be from the air pricing that it's a little bit high right now and people are probably planning in advance. They're also hearing a lot about um, availability. And so uh, people are, are planning a bit further in advance now to make sure that they uh, are able to get the vacation they want. But we are still seeing quite a bit of 22 bookings come in. And again, I think that part of that is the air pricing because um, they know it's not gonna go down. It's we're at a point where if you're looking to book, now's the time to book. And if you do wait for the air pricing to come down, you might actually not get the hotel you want because a lot of hotels are running into availability issues. Groups are through the roof. If you're a groups producer or thinking about being in groups, um, we're, we're selling groups like gangbusters right now. And so that's exploded, which has helped the hotels with their occupancy rates, but also makes availability tough at times too, especially during the key travel periods like a spring break or the holidays like Christmas and things like that. That really mirrors what our guest last week who was Danny DeBrot from internally here at Avoya Travel talked about. He said, if you're working with clients and they normally like wait until that very last second, now is your moment to get in their ear because exactly. if they wait until that last second, they're going to be standing there at the airport watching that flight take off and 
other people will be going on their vacation because they exactly. certainly won't, right? Yeah, exactly. I have, we joke in our, our groups, our head of groups always jokes that if one day, if he had a million, millions of dollars, he would just open up a hotel that were all swim out suites because everyone wants a swim out suite this year. Every group is, is uh, clamoring for the swim out suite. So it, it makes it hard for the FIT bookings to get them because so many of the groups have eaten them all up. Makes good sense. Jim Tedesco, Vice President of Sales for Apple Leisure Group Vacations is our special Meet the Industry guest today. Jim, one of the strongest reasons we believe a person looking at host agencies should consider avoid travel is because of our relationships within the industry. And we're excited about our upcoming networking event that's exclusive for those in the Avoid Network as kind of a kickoff to this year's Las Vegas Travel Agent Forum coming up here in a few weeks. So we appreciate that partnership. But Looking outside of that, how do you view the importance of relationships, regardless if it's a Voya Travel or any of the other leading companies in our industry? Just how vital are they for an agent's success, in your opinion? Um, you know, this industry was and still is based on relationships. The the core found the cornerstone of the of the industry is is relationships and and it's partnerships like we have with avoya and and we have with agencies uh and advisors across the us that make it as strong as it is you know you look i feel like you look at something like um like covid it by all means should have probably devastated this industry far more than it did and it didn't because of the relationships we all have um, you know, you think back to, I think it was January 26, maybe when they made the announcement that you would need testing to come back into the US. It was like, everyone took a deep breath, like, this is like this, if, if what we just went through didn't kill us, this is going to, but what happened, all the hotels stepped up and basically said, we're going to do COVID testing on site. Don't worry, if you test positive, you're going to get X amount of um, days for free at that time, they were doing like up to 14 days free. And it was a part, it was partnerships like that, that really allowed us to be like, okay, you know what, this is not going to be the end of the world. We're, we're kind of stronger together. Right. And, and I think COVID has truly shown what we can do, what we can build, how important it is for us to be so close, whether we're competitors or not. Um, we need to all work together. And it's, and it's, it's the cornerstone of this, of this industry. I tell my, my sales team all the time, you know, the relationships that we have with travel advisors is so important because you do business with people you trust. You have to trust us. My team and myself, we're the face, the eyes, the ears, the voice sometimes of our brand. And you need to feel comfortable going to someone should you need that escalation, should you need that extra step of help. And that's what we're here for. And that's important for you as a business owner to know that you have that support, not just even in us, but in Avoya as well, right? Like you need to feel comfortable knowing that you have the backing of someone that can help you get stuff done if you need help, if you need um, the training, if you need that support, if you need marketing support, you need a, a person just to bounce ideas off of. That's what we do. That's what we're here for. So, you know, yeah, the relationships are so important and, and more so in this industry than I think in any other industry because it does change quick, this industry, it does evolve quick. And we do get thrown. Look, if it wasn't COVID, we've had swine flu, we've had uh, tainted alcohol, we've had um, uh, uh, drug cartels, we've always, we've had the media, you know, we've always had something. Uh, I was joking, I love the whole, that everyone was talking about Johnny Depp because finally they weren't talking about tourism. Like, you know, it's love, like they were always in the media for something. Um, and so it's important that we're all, we all work so close together and that we, we, fight for the the future of tourism you know that that's really what we're all doing here very well said jim looking outside of uh, you and your role that you play there in apple leisure uh, group vacations but as a person was growing up was travel something that was important to you and your family or where did that love of travel really begin for you um i'm not gonna lie i was a jersey shore kid <laughs> we did not really i mean part of it was we didn't really have 
um, a whole lot of money growing up, quite honestly. Um, and so, yeah, we went, I'm from New Jersey, I'm, I still am, and we would go down to the Jersey Shore every year. Uh, my first, um, I actually found not too long ago, my very first plane ticket when my family took us to Disney, I was in seventh grade, my very first plane ride, it was on Continental Airlines, now United, and it was a non-smoking seat, it actually said it on the, uh, <laughs> on the, uh, the ticket. Um, and so that was my first flight. And from that part onward, I always, um, you know, you always like dream of like what you want to be when you grow up. I always wanted to be like that, that business guy that, you know, got to fly around the world and travel anywhere. And, and um, I mean, look, dreams come true, right? I guess, uh, I guess you could say it came true. Um, but the, the love of travel really came when I got my first job in travel, if I'm being honest, I started to realize and I could do a whole presentation on this just alone, but, you know, I started to realize the importance of tourism and it's why I'm so passionate about it that um, there was a, a presenter, her name is Anita Menderada. She um, sits on the UNWTO and she does a few uh, things with the USTOA. And she said once, and it has always sat with me, that tourism is so important because it creates jobs, it creates infrastructure, it creates um, it, it develops economies. It, it, it does so much for the destinations. And, you know, our customers and, and us get to experience it for seven days. But the value of what we're doing is that the people there get to experience it, the, the perks of it for a lifetime. And so for me, the love of travel really started to develop when I realized that I'm not just creating and helping create vacation memories for our mutual customers. We're also creating livelihoods for all of those that work in these destinations and in areas that truthfully would not have half of what they have if it wasn't for us sending our, our, our customers to their destination. And when you go into those destinations and you see how thankful they are and how well they treat your customers because they know that they want them to come back because it's important to them and their family and their livelihood. And that always sets with me. That's where really the love of travel kind of stemmed from. Um, yeah, I could talk days about just how important, you know, COVID itself was devastating for me, mainly because I felt so bad for so many of these destinations that went without tourism for as long as they did. Um, actually, not to take up time, but like I remember my, my first trip actually to Cancun post COVID, it was like October of 2020. And I remember going to the hotel and there were like um, uh, like acrobats and stuff in the middle of the street. Like when you're stopped at the red light, they came out and like looking for, and I thought I've never seen that before. That's so weird. And then it clicked in my head. These guys haven't worked any corporate incentive trips, things like that, where they would usually get hired at the hotels for the nightly entertainment. They haven't worked. And so they don't have any, they haven't had income for just like many advisors haven't, but they haven't had any income and, and probably were hit. And I know they were hit just as hard. So um, that's kind of where my love of tourism really stemmed from. That's a really great angle to cover that from too, Jim. I'm sure though, you know, since you developed that love of travel that you've had the chance to hit some pretty amazing places. I mean, it's just one of the benefits and byproducts of being in our great industry. What are some of the highlights of places that you've been? And as a follow-up already, what's left on the list that you really can't wait to get oh, to? Gosh, yeah. So um, luckily I married someone, my wife is equally a travel lover. So I'm, I'm lucky in that regard. Um, so some of my favorite, I, I loved Vietnam. Uh, that was like top of my list. I, and I think it was because I just didn't know what to expect. And I, I loved it. New Zealand was on my list too. I love. Um, I also just came back my wife and I have a three month old, so our baby moon we did in Turks and Caicos and we stayed at Ambergris Key, which is like a private island experience. It's in the Turks and Caicos collection. Um, but you literally get on a private plane and fly out to this 1100 acre island. There's 10 one bedroom suites and a couple multi uh, bedroom units. And you get a golf cart and a butler and you just drive. It's like, it's pure relaxation. It was, it was amazing. It was unlike any other vacation I had ever taken before. Um, and, the, and the, the flight to the private islands included in the price. So you, you don't have to charter your own private plane. If you have one, power to you, but you don't have to have <laughs> one to get there. Um, but what's left on the list, I would say is, um, I still I wanna check off all the continents. So I still haven't been to Africa and believe it or not, I haven't been to South America and Antarctica. So I'm hoping maybe I could fly to Argentina one day, check off South America and then take a ship from Argen the tip of Argentina down to Antarctica. 
and then I got to get to Africa um, as well. So check back with me in 30 years and I'll tell you if I was able to check that off the list or not. And I bet if I did check back with you in 30 years, even the places that you've checked off, there would still be a list a mile long because that's the amazing thing about our planet is that every time you see something that's amazing, you hear of another place that you equally want to get to and be able to experience exactly. that too. Yeah. Exactly. Jim, one last question before we wrap up today. Um, and it's one I always end with, it's kind of a softball question considering we're all in the industry, but what are your thoughts both as a representative of Apple Leisure Group Vacations and as a travel professional, just on the future of our industry, of leisure travel and our industry? Are, are we in good shape moving forward, you think? Yeah, 110%. And, you know, I'll say that with COVID, I believe that COVID was the great accelerator. It accelerated our industry to make changes that were probably on the front burner, but then put to the back burner. Should we do it? Should we not do it? It's probably fine the way it is. It made us take a step back and really look at our industry and figure out how can we do what we're doing, but do it better? And how can we put a greater focus on the value of the, of the travel agent. And I think what has come of it is that the great thing that has come of it is that we've realized that we've all recognized that the industry moves too quick not to change, but we've all been forced out of our comfort zone to take that step back and say, where do I need to change? And I'm not afraid to change and make changes and see what worked and what didn't work, but to also have the power that we're shaping the future of tourism right now because COVID shaped, uh, was, it shook everything up. But the power of that is that the snow globe might have been shaken, but there's still opportunities. We just got to find it in different places. And so, you know, it's been fun and challenging to find those opportunities. But, um, you know, actually, I'm, as I'm saying this, I'm looking at my bulletin board. I, I, have, a, I have a quote, and I'll, I'll actually end the, the, the interview with this quote, if you don't mind. Um, you know, it, change is consistent in this industry. And so I have this quote actually on my bulletin board to help me remember that change can be good and that you should take that step back. So it, it's kind of deep, but I'll, I'll read it to you. Uh, it says, just because I like something at one point in time doesn't mean I'll always like it or that I, I have to go on liking it at all points in time as an unthinking act of loyalty to who I am as a person based solely on who I was as a person. To be loyal to myself is to allow myself to grow and change and challenge who I am and what I think. The only thing I am for sure is unsure. And this means that I'm growing and not stagnant or shrinking. And I love that quote because first of all, for myself, it challenges you to, to change and to be okay with change. But if you were to change the myself into my company, my agency, it makes, it forces you to out of that comfort zone to say, I'm not afraid to change. And I'm not afraid of whatever's gonna get thrown at me and whatever's gonna you know, make me have to relook at what I'm doing and maybe find a, a new and a, a better or a more efficient way to do something. So um, the, the future of tourism is strong and it's strong because of like people like you that are on this call right now. Um, it's strong because we all kind of come together and it's strong because we've been able to shape our new rules and terms and conditions and ways we do business is a result of COVID, yes, but it's also probably been something that's been a long time coming that has forced us to make this industry better. And I do think that that has happened. And I think we're heading in, the, in a perfect direction to um, all be successful in this industry. Jim Tedesco, everyone, Vice President of Sales for Apple Leisure Group Vacations. Jim, we thank you so much for your time. And I look forward to catching up with all my Apple Leisure Group friends in Las Vegas at the uh, Travel Forum here in a few weeks. Thanks, Chris. I appreciate it. Next week, as part of an amazing month of shows for On Deck with Avoy, I mean, we've got to find something to keep up with that conversation with Jim because that was amazing. But next week, I think we've got one. We're going to be welcoming in one of the co-founders of Avoya Travel, senior advisor, the father of two of our current CEOs. We're talking about Brad Anderson. Brad's a member of the CLIA Hall of Fame. He's been in the travel industry his entire life. He helped create Avoya Travel, and we're incredibly excited to uh, an honor just to have Brad as our featured guest next uh, Thursday, a few days prior to Father's Day here at On Deck with Avoya, your weekly travel update. So make sure you join us for that special episode. Okay, let's talk resources really quick because Avoya Travel is very proud to have the best in class resources to help both a new to the industry travel advisor 
or those already established but looking to go to the next level. Our resources can meet you no matter where you are on the journey. Our Foundations for Early Success program, our network enrichment team, our amazing people behind support, they're there for you. Pick up the phone. They actually answer the phone. You talk to real people. So reach out, get connected with somebody on my team. Let's see if it makes sense. If it does, we'll put it all together and you can be a member of the Avoyan Network. And how do you reach out to us? Well, pretty simple there too. Like I say every week, my email, reach out. Love to hear from you. Chris.green at avoyatravel.com. There's the phone number you can call. You can scan the code or go to avoyanetwork.com. There's a wealth of information there about our program. A big thank you again to Jim Tedesco from our friends at Apple Leisure Group Vacations. What a wonderful conversation that was. Big thank you to Marissa and Annabella from our marketing department for producing our show and doing a great job every week. Thank you for being part of On Deck with Avoya. We look forward to our special Father's Day edition next week with Brad Anderson. And until then, take care, everyone.